What's up, everybody? Big D, Derek Lambert. Check it out. Myth Vision Podcast. And all my fans, anyone who's watched, anyone who loves what we do, thanks for listening. I'm going to kind of roast myself today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this because I'm actually going to show you guys from when I was extremely religious. Now, I personally help people who are in recovery or people who are drug addicts who struggle with drug addiction to get uh, help, you know, to, to make it to a, a normal place in their life. And I actually do believe, personally, from my own experience, that's all I can do is tell you that, that I had an addiction to religion. Religion helped me escape reality, the world that, that we live in. It helped me escape this place. Now, of course, I was raised, I had traumas. Everyone has traumas. I think everybody's addicted to something some way, shape, or form. But I was using religion to kind of escape this reality. I mean, imagine it's kind of platonic. You know, there's a world outside of this world you look forward to, to the point to where I actually would have dreams as a fundamentalist Christian that the world's going to come to an end, the rapture's going to happen, uh, the world's going to burn with fire. Why would I want to have children bringing them into a world that's going to burn up, right? So you have that type of eschatology attached to the religion. But there's so many things I could poke at Christianity or even just religion in general and say, eh, there are some obviously pros that have maybe happened, but are they pros because of religion or are they pros because humans recognized that really we got to coexist, we got to try and get along with other humans and try to be the best person we can to help other humans. Without getting into all that, this is not to be a technical video and talking about all these things and going into belief systems and stuff. I wanted to kind of clown on myself and let you guys see the kind of stuff that I did, like I grew my freaking beard out and the way I looked, it was it was crazy. I mean, I, I've, I've done a lot of different things, you know, uh, growing up from punk rock, you know, hardcore heavy metal to hip hop to, you know, being a sports jock to, you know, you name it, man, I've practically done it. It's it's I'm all over the board and I was trying to find out who I was. Well, I think I found who I am today and I'm still learning who I am, but I no longer have to strive to know everything. I have to be right. That was a big no-no for me. I had to be right about everything. I had to know the truth, and that that was it. And now I'm starting to realize how much I don't know, and it's it's really refreshing. So let's look at me years ago when I was extremely religious and clown on me a little bit. Here we go. All right, so here's the phases I went through. I was first a fundamentalist like a John Hagee type fundamentalist somewhat. I mean, not John Hagee, so to speak, but eschatology wise, and I was Zionist. So you'll see, of course, I loved the art. I still to this day think the art's pretty cool. Um, some of these are not as old pictures, somehow are mixed in there, but here we start to move up. You'll see, I had like a fantastic idea of Jesus, you know, coming on the clouds and, you know, uh, this revelation idea of Jesus. Well. As I started to move on, and you could see like jujitsu, right? I was very fundamentalist, Zionist, and I move on and bump into somebody who introduced me to Calvinism and showed me like how the doctrine works. It's systematic and such. Systematic theology starts to kind of try to make sense. It's a very good harmonization tool to try and make sense of these things. And Dr. Bob's like, you know, his whole point is not trying to harmonize. Not all these texts teach the same thing, same doctrines. Some are contradictory. Some are contradictory within their own text. That's a New Testament critical scholar for you. Now, John Calvin, you know, Martin Luther, John Calvin, other reformers. I was big into this movement, and uh, you'll see that in just a minute. Like monergism, the idea that it's one work. Uh, God does all the work. And man's free will has nothing to do with salvation whatsoever. I used to look at Acts right here, 1348. As many as were ordained to eternal life believed. The idea that God pre-ordains and makes sure that those he chose are going to be saved, etc. I got into that big time. In fact, you're about to see, like, you can see my beard here. Like, I got straight up Amish and shit. Like, I just, I really went into this so deep uh, I already showed you that book let me show you uh, so my brother and I like here's one right here um, let's see this is GK Bill the book of Revelation I was big into into researching this stuff here's a church my brother went to like a recovery camp 
trying to get off drugs and I went over here and like, come on dude, I'm posing for a picture with my hands out and being so pious to pray in front of a camera. But I really was trying to be, you know, like a, I guess a good Christian. Um, oh, here's a good one. Check out my swagger, man. I thought I was hot stuff here. I was the Amish pimp. Like, straight up, let me get on my wagon and horse in this biatch. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, let me pull up this one so you guys can see better. Look at this beard I had. So, like I just freaking let it grow like wild and stuff. Let me do this. Just, just Amish pimp right there, y'all. I got my, I got my uh, wife's, and we're off in the middle of nowhere, running our own cult. You know, I'm just kidding. I was a Reformed uh, Presbyterian at this time, and this was my pastor here. Uh, I was excommunicated from that church. Um, I stopped going, and the reason I stopped going is because my, t like, what I started finding out in terms of my research at the time was there was the doctrine of full preterism and it's the idea that you know the New Testament teaches these time statements that things are supposed to happen the eschaton or the parousia the parousia however you want to pronounce it is supposed to happen soon it's not supposed to be stretched out 2,000 years or happen sometime down the road and um, I finally cut my beard somewhere around this time so I ended up going and meeting a guy Don Fortner in Kentucky so I just cut my beard to look like a five-year-old. Um, here's Don Fortner. I always loved his preaching. Uh, he was a hardcore predestinarian Calvinist. And um, he had all these books. I used to love listening to his sermons. I would listen to hours of them every day, literally, um, till I would run out of sermons. I made videos on an old YouTube channel that I have where I actually took some of his sermons and gave him a little music in the background and, you know, enhanced them. Started going to Bible college, of course. I was a Calvinist at the time. Look at me and my Amish. I call it Amish. I, maybe it's not Amish because I think Amish actually cut the beard or the, the mustache. But nonetheless, I was hardcore about having a beard. And the only reason I grew my beard is for religious purposes. It was not... I'm going to just be a man and wear a beard. No, I felt manly when I had it, but I'm saying that's not why I grew it. Some men might be on here who have a beard going, what the hell's wrong with a beard? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with a beard. My beard was my religious symbol. Now, I had my wisdom teeth taken out. I relapsed on drugs. And if it weren't for my relapses, I must say, I would not have had pain and therefore would not have had growth in life and realizing, man, I don't have all the answers. I was just like a big baby, dude. They'd put me to sleep. I, I just couldn't handle the dentist. Now that I've had all this drug experience and done some horrible things to use, I found myself in a situation where I ended up, you know, uh, I guess you'd say not afraid to go on the, uh, go to the dentist and have work done. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what we got here. Started working for T-Mobile. I was working for T-Mobile here. Okay, got kids turtles. We moved to Raleigh. Ryan had Caden. She got really sick. She was in the hospital. My wife was in the hospital with, uh, I guess she, she had to have antibiotics. I can't remember exactly what happened. My dad's special forces in the Green Beret. Um, somewhere around here, I think I was starting to take um, steroids again, I think. I don't know. I can't remember, but... I went through some phases. This guy got shot, okay? We saved his life, literally, and had the cops come and everything. Held, held the pressure down so he clawed it up and didn't die. Uh, my wife left me. We were separated during this time. We had a, I had a really struggling situation in this. And so I always thought it was religion. I always thought God had my back. Like it was, you know, God this, God that. And years go by, my niece's wedding... Years go by, and as years go by, I end up starting to deconstruct. And what I mean is, is I stopped being so strict about what I believed. And so I went through this phase. Uh, right here is actually part of a full preterist uh, church helping out with a speech. Uh, a buddy of mine named Michael Miano. Haven't spoken to him in a long time. Um, but, uh, you know, and then there's Jen Fishburne, and there is Joe Daniels. And Michael Miano and me, and... We were all hanging out. We had uh, we had a little preterist, I guess you'd say, hyenas, whatever you want to call it, uh, that weekend. 
Now I'm getting clean again. And this is the last time I got clean. Oh, I screwed up. Okay, last time I got clean, it wasn't too far back here. This is kind of current right here, guys. I, I'm confident, I'm full of myself, and I don't have um, the belief in God like I did. You know? And I, I'm truly, truly comfortable with that. Now, that being said, let's go back over here and let's change up this lighting so you guys can see. Oops. All right. So, here we are. I found myself technically realizing how many ideas there are out there about God, about religion, um, the different systems. And I found out about astrotheology, mythology, etc., etc. And when I started thinking about celestial myths and how these are possibly celestial myths, I held on to something still, right? I still held on to belief in something. And uh, it was a good transitional phase for me to go the mythological route, going toward mythology, uh, rather than trying to go from a belief in the book to like an anti-belief in the book, like a total absolute polar opposite. It was a good transitional phase for me because I don't think I would have been comfortable enough to going from believer to absolute non-believer like that. It allowed me to say maybe there's something more and that possibly there could be something more. But I really think I was addicted to it because I was able to escape reality in my research and my studying and the music that I would listen to. Of course, you know, a lot of Christian music has that uh, mesmerizing type, hypnosis style type rhythm with a repetitive type of hooks. And it just gets you in this, in this mentality where you're kind of zoned out of reality. Um, and today, I, I actually no longer part of any of that. And I, at this point, I'm looking for natural causes. I'm trying to explain things, if we possibly can, with a natural explanation rather than needing to be supernatural or suppose anything in another realm. Does that make sense? Or another metaphysical explanation or something to make sense of some of these things. I'm trying to make sense of them naturally. That's what I'm trying to do. I think we humans give purpose to things. And without us, in our own frame of mind, in our own minds, these things may have purpose to other things, but they may not serve the ser same purpose we humans give them. So, uh, I don't know. Today, this is where I'm at. I don't know. Uh, I'm very comfortable with not knowing if there is something called a God or a God or something as we've been understanding God to be out there. I very much doubt there is by definition. I guess you'd say I'm an atheist, but I'm more of a I don't know. To be fair, is it possible? Yeah, and I had this pointed out to me recently when I was talking about, do you really think the 27 New Testament books were all written by people of the same like doctrines and mind and all that? And I was talking about Bart Ehrman's book, you know, Forged. And this guy's like, Derek, do you think it's possible that, um, is it possible that there was an infallible book ever written in history before? And I said, well, I guess it's possible just as much, it's just as possible though that we live in a matrix, you know, like Elon Musk talks about. We live in some computer, so to speak, and not, you know, this is not real. Uh, that's possible. Uh, is it possible that there are metaphysical pink elephants running around right now everywhere and we can't see them? That's possible. Uh, we can talk about possible, but what's really probable? And I said, give me a good, exp give me a good example of something that is provable that says, hey, this is an infallible book. This is an infallible text. Or an infallible person or whatever, you know, show me, show me an example or anything. And I guess I'm going to remain a doubting Thomas. I'm going to remain a doubting Thomas because I think that's a good way. I think the New Testament, when it, when it starts to praise those who do not see yet still believe is a way of saying they're trying to get you to believe without needing to see. I think, and notice Jesus didn't even mock Thomas in this text. Um, I think it's good to doubt and to not think that this is possibly real. If it is, I think that just like Jesus, he'll reveal himself to you. That's it. He'll reveal himself to you or God or it or whatever will reveal itself to you and make it very clear. And if not, he doesn't care about you. He only cared about them. So there's a lot of po logical explanations that make sense to me. I'm fully okay with being who I am today. And I uh, just wanted to roast me a little and show you guys I was a little bit uh, wackadoodle 
you know, drinking the Kool-Aid. I was really, really uh, religious. And today I'm not. I love you guys. And let us know if you have any ideas of, of uh, videos that you're interested in hearing, seeing, whatever. Let us know. And if you yourself have something that uh, you know you think is intelligent and, and worthy of discussion, um, please email me. I got to email Derek Lambert for the number four help at gmail.com. That's D E R E K, the number four, or Derek Lambert, sorry, D E R E K L A M B E R T, the number four help at gmail.com. Plus, I've got my stuff down here in the description. You can hit me up on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm all over the place. So you can just search my name and you'll find me. All right, guys, Myth Vision Podcast.